And welcome back, my dear listeners. We are back in our returning back to the astral plane arc. And we are once again joining in the midst of Everin and Figs is big returning back to the astral sea. And last time they they took part and they had a really big concert they went to that ended in a pretty big fight. And Everin calling out Vince McOdinson for ownership of the MTWF. Damn straight. I'm sorry, the MVWF. So now it's been a very inter- interesting 24 hours because you and Figs have been fully indoctrinated into all knowledge of M- MVWF. You've been getting a crash course and study from, from Stutter. And as he was, he was educating you about kayfabe that the minute that you go through those curtains and you're in front of the crowd, you're in your wrestling persona character. And so, and as Suter was telling you, he is the the shining beacon for the people. With his magnificent flames, he brings hope to the populace. And he's a and he's that shining role model for kids. The but outside outside of cafe, granted, he's still a nice guy, but he's not all hardcore. Like, make sure to brush your teeth and take your vitamins. Like, eh, yeah, that's just his character. Yeah, yeah. And interestingly enough. You all got to be take part of the pre-show meeting. You know what? I'm actually going to transport the listeners to there now instead of just doing a recap of it. It's pretty late. It's pretty late at the elemental plane of fire. Now the violet purple light is turned more into a darkish blue violet combined with violet to signify late night. And all the wrestlers are there. You're seeing. Well, actually, no, it's weird because you do not see the under dreamer. You do not see Cthulhu there. You don't see this other one that they mentioned by the name of Rothgar because you've heard everyone say that one thing about him. He is loud. Mm-hmm. You definitely get the impression that the one that you're seeing, you're definitely seeing Kossus, the He calls himself the God of Fire. Essentially what he looks like is it's just gargant. Just think really big red armor with a flaming sphere head. Nice. Then you also... <clears throat> BB, you're... Hold on. Tangled with my dog. There we go. He was entangled with my headphones. So, as as you're also scanning around, you also see what looks like this very interesting female wrestler. She, half of her face and body is humanoid, and then the other half is, like, skeletal. Granted, she is buff as shit on the humanoid half. and Half humanoid, half skeletal. Mm-hmm. Hell. Yep. And then sitting next to her looks to be what looks like a snake humanoid. Jormungandr. Yeah, they're talking between each other. They're looking at they're looking over at where now what you see is this is the epitome of. OK, it's just Thor from God of War Ragnarok. Just oh, that Thor. Honestly, good. I prefer that Thor because yeah, it feels I'm, more authentic. Honestly, yeah, going for more of the actual feel of what that Thor would be. So, yeah, that's they're just looking at him. They're doing the crossing across their necks saying you're dead. And Thor is just looking at them, laughing his ass off. And then he cracks open this gargantuan can and then just pours it down his neck. Nice. And then you hear like a thunder crackle as you just hear him say, Can you get a hell yeah? There we go. Hell and Jormungandr are just... Mm. You don't see... Now, obviously, Thor does look distressed and you just hear him say, Where the hell is Loki? God damn it. I'm sorry, but I have to make my entrance this way. When he says, Can I get a hell yeah? I Everyone would have to pipe up don't you mean can't you can you get a yeah from hell? Hell immediately turns to look at you. Her she looks pissed, insulted, offended. Thor goes, it just starts billowing from his mighty belly. <gasps> yeah, I like you, kid. <laughs> yeah, let me get a yeah from you over there, hell. I'll Lady Hell. This. I'll remember this. What is your name? I am Everin Andelson, second of his name. I'm the one who made the big announcement. So, oh, then I take it that that other one next to you. Oh, I understand. I see now. That's why the lineup's been changed. I'll be fighting against her. For what it's worth, I do apologize for any mess ups this caused. I, well, I had my reasons to do what I did. I meant no personal insult to any of you, actually. Oh, no insult at all. All I'm going to say is as she looks at you, Figs, I'll try not to hurt you. I don't think you'll have to not try. I think it'll be very difficult. Oh, oh. Hell gets up from her chair. 
Do you respond as she starts walking towards you? We're we, we're going to have to learn. <laughs> I think everyone just kind of puts a hand on Vig's shoulders like, we're really going to have to give you a crash course in trash talking. And he actually playfully ruffles her hair. <laughs> he, she's going to brush the hand away like, I'm taking down a god bigger than you. Oh, do you do you square chest off against hell? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I don't like being underestimated. <laughs> Everyone's just going to raise his hands and then I surrender move and take three steps back towards Thor because he ain't part of this shit. He knows when to back off. Oh, yes. I am loving this. Figs, you are staring down hell. Hell is staring down figs. You're just ch- bumping chest against each other. Oh, are you two? The fight isn't on yet. And I'm still the boss. And I still call when the fight starts. You should have said, I'm still the boss and I still call the shots. It would have rhymed better. <laughs> Vince McGillison <laughs> looks at you, Everin. And it goes for you too, boy. Our fight isn't yet. I'd save the trash talking for when your promo starts. If you even think you can handle such a thing with your... Or if you even understand what a promo is. Well, yes. And I probably know how to talk to a crowd better than you do. I am a prince, after all. Public speaking is one of my strong suits. You, however, could make a great job at a county fair calling pigs. So... This is when you finally get a good look at Vince McOdenson. Vince McOdenson is a dwarf. He stands a whopping four foot eight, but his weight is half a ton because it's nothing but solid muscle. Oh, God. It's like Kingpin from Marvel. <laughs> and getting a good look, his literally one one finger would equal the width of a normal man's fist. His hands and fingers are just gargantuanly thick and massive and scarred and calloused. Ah, so you, you're the one that called me out. Vince McOdinson is the name. MVWF is my pride. Enjoy. It's my game. As he holds out his big old hand for you, Everin. Everin takes it. He does a tight grip, but not enough for you having to do a strength contest roll or anything. Just Okay, not one of those. Okay. No. I was just, waiting for that, honestly. Actually, no. This is just enough to actually show respect. Surprisingly enough, you think this man would try to be arrogant, but no, he just... <clears throat> good strong grip. Yeah. it's. I have to be strong if I had to sur- since I had to survive your boss. <clears throat> you understand, K-Fade. My boy Suter would be well enough to explain that. So I'm going to have to ask you to respect it, could you? Keep that between us. We'll talk more on that later. You he see, gives a he, nod. He holds his hands up and he circle. He, he stands in a, and spins around, goes, no weapons, nothing on me. So you know I come bearing no hostility. This is just a normal meeting we would have before a show. My employees know. It's just that's business talk. And my, my employees know I keep that kind of business private. And he actually looks to the others in the room. They're leaning toward listening intently because they've never heard this side talked about with Vince. And okay. oh. so, so, so they're kind of both interested and showing that he is telling the truth. So mm-hmm. everyone will acquiesce to his request. Keep business, business, keep the show, show. Thank you kindly. Now, as you can see, no, we were going to have a tag team between Jormungandr and hell here with uh, Thor and Loki, but your girl there figs that changeling. I'm gonna have her fight hell. What do you think, little changeling? You think you can put on a good show? Well, I've talked with bigger business and just put it on the show, so I'm sure you'll be entertaining regardless. Excellent. Now, I don't need to be so kind to tell you this, but we award different kinds of fighting styles and thinking in the MVWF. And I can tell you're no, you may not be no barbarian or monk or fighter. I can tell you got some of that magic in you. Well, guess what? We allow the use of magic just as long as you find a way to use it in your moves. He gives you like a finger gun, Figs. I'm plenty strong without it. Oh, that just means you get to be creative. You know what? I like that intensity you're showing. I like that. 
I like it. I bet y'all were thinking I was going to come in here trying to uh, sneak attack y'all and all. But once again, that's just kayfabe, everyone. That's just kayfabe. I have to appear that way to the populace. (laughs) I'm just a good businessman. I'm sure you are. So what then do I play a part of, if if I may ask? I'm curious. Well, I'm a man of my word. You got my curiosity and my attention. You want to wrestle for ownership of MVWF? Well, let me tell you a little secret. I actually don't own it. All the wrestlers drop their shit. What was that, boss? Well, I may be the chairman, but I don't own it. Kayfade, baby. That's how good my kayfade runs. I've been a wrestler since the beginning of MVWF. So, of course, I know how to put on a true well act. Then who actually owns this place? This, the, the multiversal wrestling. He squints his eyes at you, looking at you, Everin. Hmm. All right. I mean, it's a genuine right. question. He has no idea. He's not. Tr- he's not trying to squeeze. You know. You're not secretly no reporter or nothing. All this gibbly gop story you've been going on is true. You're I'm not, not a wrestler. I don't kayfade. So you're not a reporter. Neither you, little changeling. Mm-mm. You're not a mimic in disguise. Putting the wool over my eyes. Nope. Unfortunately, the circumstances of my people, I could never be a reporter. Um, you actually got Vince's uh, attention. What do you mean about your people? What happened to the changelings? It's God decided that they were disgusted and thought genocide was. Vince actually looks very solemn at you and gives a polite morning bow to you. Ah, my humble apologies. He'll get his. I um, really did not know this. Um, I have much to think about later. One of our, uh, one of our wrestlers is a changeling. Be sparing with that knowledge, please. It, they don't know. But continuing on, to answer your question, Neverin. I know what you're thinking. Was it that gentleman I met with and talked with? No, nah, no, it's not. Actually, no. The owner of MV of the MVWF. All right, my wrestlers, it's time you finally understood just who owns this great corporation and why we've been doing this. Let me make sure I get the name correctly for you all. Oh, I haven't seen my boss for some time, and I'm kind of worried about her. Her name is Lyra. She's a, she's a lesser god, but she's still a deity. She's the god of joy. She actually, she came, she come, she usually hails from the Feywild. I have some bad news then. If you think what happened to the changelings are bad, you should hear the whole story. The the man who you were thinking, I was thinking, was secretly or oh, secretly the owner of the Wrestling Federation. Well, I know you know the story, but for those that don't, my father released Thar's Dune. Thor's the, eyebrow cocks back, cocks up like, hmm? He was tempted and did a great act of chaos that threw not just the Astral Sea, but other realms into disarray. The great cosmology wheel has been broken. Up is down, right is left, cats and dogs are living together, it is mass hysteria. The Pantheon has been decimated. There's only two left, whom I actually met and spoke to. But as far as I know, all the other gods are gone. The Celestials have turned and have been working for Thara's Dune, thinking they're still doing celestial work the hells have actually been trying to put things right <clears throat> we ended up here the two of us because we fought thar's dune and in a great explosion i figs and several others were tossed across what remains of the multiverse and i say that because some realms have been attacked and have been obliterated <sighs> there's a good chance liara has been destroyed you hear a slow clap right before Vince can open his mouth and go, you like to sometimes, you, you like to just tell everything. Just run that mouth. No wonder he had me coming after you. Everin like turns you. at the voice. So, what you see there. Figs, your Jathman dagger, it's br- glowing so bright it's it, it hurts your fucking eyes. But anyway, what you see there, this gentleman, standing about a good six foot three, a nice, good, solid, just perfectly sculpted body. His hair, half of it is like a dark blue, and the other half is like a d- dark purple magenta. 
and it's and it's long but spiky. One of his eyes, it's he just has like a massive scar, and his eyes is pure milky white. And then he, you can see where he has a scar that stops, starts at the top of his neck and goes down and just starts jagging and getting wider. And it looks like it goes down to his chest. He has really, really sharp looking massive talons going off of his hands. And he doesn't wear boots. He just has bare feet. But his feet look like, well, draconic, just mixed with some kind of humanoidus. And his teeth, oh can't call him teeth it's more just a ma araka from mortal Kombat. pretty much Ugh. and who might be and who might i have the pleasure of speaking to or shall i just call you anglerfish jaws you know that's what i can't stand about you lesser beings there it is is that even when you're introducing yourself you can clearly tell you're standing in front of some kind of deity and you don't ha- you still have the nerve to address yourself on the same grounds as me I mean, yeah, I don't find your so-called unification worthy of praise. Oh, shut up, little slave to my fucking sister. Oh, no. Everin is up in his face and delivering a key-empowered punch to his gut. Okay, so roll the attack and then give me a constitution roll at the same time. Ooh, all right. Because this is going to hurt your hand. Even with a key-empowered attack? Ooh. Oh, yeah, you're punching Bahumat. Oh, fuck. So, roll your attack and... No, that's fair. That's fair. I was just looking at my sheet to make sure I was... Uh, but no, I respect what you're doing here. And you said a constitution? Yep. Okay. It's just gonna smart like a mother. As you feel it in Bahumat, he's just just doing this as hell was doing with eggs just a second ago, squares chest up against you, and goes, Oh! Oh, you are just like he said you would be. I- Gotta respect the gumption. And you'd better respect the beloved of my best friend. You mess with her, you mess with me. The name's Bahumat. Well, Baha, it's gonna be a blast dealing with you. (laughs) Seems like I don't need to introduce myself since you know who I am. Oh, I know you so well, Everin. It's funny. I've been around you your entire life, and you don't even, you didn't even know it. You know what the best part is? Your daddy was planning your death, your downfall the entire time. I am that contingency that if you ever step out of line, I was meant to come for you. Well, here we are. Here we are. But just as much as I have been waiting to just finally put an end to you and pay my debt from coming back but i can't alas i can't no 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 i got somebody else that's gonna be fighting you (laughs) you'll see tomorrow i just wanted to get a good look at you because it's finally my time everett me and you will be squaring off here soon and i can't wait to cross iron with you you know it's strange i thought my uh, father was more of a cat person but yet here, here in front of me is one of his bitches. <laughs> oh. <laughs> here again, I'm going to blow your mind because I bet you thought I'd be petty and try to attack you. But I'm, like I said, I respect the gumption because I know deep down you're shaking because you know I could fucking kill you any second. But here's the best part. I'm not. I'm going to leave you waiting because that ticking clock is the worst part. Good luck in your match tomorrow, Everin. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Because if you lose to this person, it means that I've wasted my fucking time preparing myself waiting for you. Prove me right for my expectations. (laughs) Everin's just going to stand there staring at him. Face as impassive as he can get it. There he is. All right. Events. You can't back out of the deal now. And he, as he's walking away from you, ever, and he grips Vince McOdinson's shoulder. And you just hear, like, what sounds creaking is Vince's sho- collarbone and his shoulder. The bone's literally just creaking as they're bending. You can't Ow. get out of it. You can't get out of it anymore. <laughs> the deal's in place, Vince. Now, tell the locker room how, it's, how the show's going to work. And he gets real close for this one. But he's looking at you, Everin, as he says this. Remember what you did this. Remember what you did this for. 
Just as easily as we gave her back to you, we can take her away. All right. You guys have a good show now. (laughs) You guys have fun now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, as he's passing away, he really looks hard at you, Figs. Ah, Don't. Definitely, yeah, gripping that, like, dagger, like, knuckle swipe. Okay. Once the time comes... I'll make sure I kill my sister first, and then I'll come for you. Have fun. Don't die, because that's my job. You're on my shit list. Fuck. And he's, he, he just whistles as he walks away from you, Figs. Yeah, she's straight on top of eat your fucking part. <laughs> he just flips you the bird as he's walking away, Figs. Oh, I double flip birds. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. So... Everin, Everin just kind of flexes his hand. I'm kidding, steel plate mail. God damn. On top of a on top of a boulder, Vince is shaking as he's just so. We will be changing the focus and the focus on who will be the stars of Suitermania. We will not be focusing on the baby faces. Suter's leaning towards in his chair. It like falls underneath him. Like what? <laughs> It will be focused on the heels, and Casas shall be taking the championship. Casas just laughing. You can just see like a twisted smile inside the flame, flaming sphere. <laughs> what? Is people have gotten tired of that good guys always winning bullshit? Come on, Suter. Why do you think it was time for us to split up? I was tired of being in your shadow and your stupid little good boy routine. It's time to change things up. It's time to give this, give the MVWF some, some attitude. I'm happy that this so-called owner is gone if she's really dead. So how much are you getting paid? Asus just locks eyes at you, Everin. What did you say? I'm sorry. I didn't realize I stuttered. I asked you. How much you're getting paid? Or should I use the proper term and say bribe? <laughs> oh, and what makes you, pray tell, what makes you think this? I'm just looking out for the betterment of our federation. It's time, for this, it's time for this territory to step up. I mean, it sounds more like you're out making sure that the betterment is for your pocketbook. Or is that just a happy coincidence? Bosses. Please tell me this isn't true. He looks at Suter. Are you, are you really going to tell me you would believe some person? It, no, I don't need nothing for my pocketbook, boy. I've been around the multiverse for longer than even you were a thought in your parents' head or his parents' head. Okay? I have plenty of money. Yeah, what that, that, that multiverse that you've been traveling around in is a lot smaller now thanks to the thing that took over my father. Something I'm trying to defeat. I get it. The whole kayfabe thing. But you're not going to have an audience to act for if Thar's Dune wins. If Bahamut wins. Yeah. You you come in thinking you have all the answers when there's so much more on the table. No. Sometimes. I don't have all the answers, Kossuth. I am a mortal being trying to fight an elder god. Because I'm the only one, among others, who seem to be able to do so. And you're here having a multi-realm dick-measuring contest because you want more of the spotlight. He stands up, kicking his chair. Just his, the sphere for his head turns a bright blue for the intense rage he's feeling. More spotlight? More spotlight? The only thing... You're the one going on about how this territory needs more attitude and how we're finally focusing on the bad guys, which you're a part of. Yes, I'm calling you a greedy little shit who isn't happy with the amount of attention he's getting, and your attitude is putting the multiverse in danger. Now, I will tell you, the reason I challenged McOdinson for ownership is because I want to put the skilled warriors that make up this group and I know you're actually fighters. You know, you're, you're actually warriors. You can actually pull this shit off. I want, I want your help. It's not just joy and happiness and distraction that the multiverse needs. Which you, you know, kayfabe, 
give them. But we need your actual skill putting Thara's Dune down simply so that there is a tomorrow to have a wrestling match for. The blue flame quells down to more of a gentle yellow, signifying kind of a sadness. And Kostas just looks at you and goes, too bad you weren't here earlier. And he leaves. Figs, give me a perception roll real quick. Uh, that's a 19. All right, I'm going to give this to you. So you've really started to understand the Jothman dagger's form of glowing. So the sputtering, flashing color that gave off when Kossus left as he passed you, it's the same type of flickering that gave gives off for only one individual, and that is Star's Dune. Take that with whatever you want. Everyone else in the locker, Vince is just going over how the show is going to work. Figs, you will be the opening act facing hell for the women's championship. And then we will be going into the Hell in a Cell tag team match of Thor and Everin versus Jormungandr and a surprise challenging challenger. Loki. Oh, well, we shall see. I, I, I'm, I, I'm just betting on Loki because Thor was talking about where was he earlier as his partner and i know norse mythology well enough to know that loki can switch sides as easily as one can flip a coin oh this is gonna be great oh my god when oh i'm gonna blow your mind so i bet you are so going over and then finally the finale kossith versus versus suitor and then, depending on the results of the Hell in the Cell, it will lead to a final match between Vince and Everin. There is a cold, dead air, a strange feeling in the air at this night. There is a everyone, usually everyone in the in the territory, right before a massive show, they all get together like a big family and share a meal and discuss like what moves. But it's just dead silence and. This is when we're going to go to the day of Sudermania, and we're going to start with you, Fit. You're giving your promo for your oh, thoughts. And how you- Before that day starts, I would have liked to pull Everin and uh, Suter to the side. Of course. Okay, yes. Take it away. Uh, she's going to like like watch out for Kossum, because he is a seed just waiting to bloom. And like she kind of motions to the dagger. That explains why he's been acting weird. Understood. The minute something goes off, I'll I'll promise me you two will not hesitate to jump in and help. So that way we can prevent it. No hesitation. All right then. Thank you. Since we the- since we rolled back a little bit, I have something that I'd like to do too. Of course, take it away. Even though I challenged Vince McMahon for ownership, I would like to speak to the wrestlers individually and let them know what's going on, and what's on the line. If I happen to win, if I happen to survive this, I don't want to force them into anything. So I'm going around to them individually, and I am asking, I am telling them, I am asking them, and hopefully recruiting them to my side in the fight against Tharos Dune. Hmm. Interesting. So, right now, Vince knows what's going on. Hell, Jormungandr, Thor, and Suter, and Lunar Swift all know what's going on. But he's reaching out to other wrestlers. Each one of the wrestlers that you tell that you're encountering, they take this news and they just, after the show, we'll have a big meeting. We'll let you know our thoughts on this. It's, we need to, believe it or uh, not, the best way we can think, each one tells you this, is with our fist. So. I understand. And I understand that this is extremely short notice, so take the time you need. You know what? I'm going to have a little fun with this now since we really back. I want to give you guys both something for rewarding both of your actions. For them. Both of you, give me a perception roll. Sure thing, boss. It's uh, 18. 20. You both definitely meet, the, meet enough. So during the course of the night, each one of you will have noticed two really peculiar looking gentlemen. They really remind you of Thor, but just not as big. It looked like they could be his relatives, maybe even his sons. Sons, Magni and Modi. Just, especially for you, Figs, I'm really going to give this because of the 20 from Everin. Your dagger gives off that weird flickering when you looked at both of them. Oh, no. 
<laughs> and they were carrying a shovel when you saw them. As they talked about, ha ha, now the dreamer truly is under. And they were holding a thumbs down. Oh, well, that just means it's going to be a big re-entrance for Cthulhu. Because it's the Undertaker. And we all know how theatrical wrestling is. So, yes, you know what, Eric? Because you actually got the names correct. Yes, those two were Modi and Magni. Thor, Indeed, Thor's sons. Where's his daughter? Oh, you mean Thruder? I do mean Thruder. You'd have to... You'll find out soon. You'll find out soon. Very well, then. So, now... I told you, man, Norse mythology is like one of my big things, and I don't mean Marvel style either. Oh, my face (laughs) is hurting from how big my smile is at the moment because of what's coming. So, now, Figs, we're going to start with you because your match is first. (laughs) Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this Ragnarok meets wrestling? (laughs) Oh my god! (laughs) Alright, alright, alright. I'm gonna mute, stand up, and stretch my leg. Figs, you have fun. (laughs) Hold on, I need to make sure I get the name correctly. There we go, yep, Heimdall. So, Figs, you're standing next to Heimdall. He has a super amazing, what looks like a horn, but it ends with a mic end for it. And he's holding it at you. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is Emdal here from the greatest Pseudomania. And I'm here with the with one of the great with the new entrances to the MVWF. This is what's your what's your wrestling name, by the way? He holds the mic towards you. Probably just pick up your like sword to use like the winner thing. All right. Well, do you have any kind of choice words against the against hell? Because I gotta tell you, she's one of the toughest chicks here in the MVWF. I'll send them all running. Oh, hold on. I need to see. Oh shit. Well, I said if it was the wall burst open and then there's hell. And she comes running over, grabbing the mic from Heimdall. And she says, who the hell do you think you are? You're going to send what and what? I'm going to send you all running. Oh, that is it. I'll see you in the ring. And that's when the camera does like the the cross white fade as figs in hell are just doing their standoff locking eyes against each other an explosion goes off figs what is your entrance music and take it away what does the entrance look like for you as you're going down to the ring uh just real quick <laughs> every now and i want you to start thinking too because the same thing's about to happen for you after this match oh for sure i need i i, I need to find some proper entrance music <laughs> something that it's Evren. You know, I wonder. 80s glam rock wouldn't be remiss. Oh, I could totally see Evren with 80s glam rock. I think, considering what he kind of feels like he has to do, there's really only one song that fits. Mm. You know, Figs, while you're getting yours together, I will just say how how it looks for when hell comes in. Like a bunch of, like a quite a few fog machines go off, so the floor just like it's covered in like a mist. The lighting becomes like an offshoot, like an offshoot purplish, greenish color. And as she's walking, she just has a cloak. She has a cloak covering her face. And next, marching next to her is a bunch of other men in cloaks holding candles as they're just chanting, Say okay. And they're just doing a whole bunch of monk chanting. And then there's like ones that are holding just this massive wicker man statue and as they reach the halfway point hell rips off her cloak turning around points at the wicker man and erupts in flames and hell and then hell's right there in the middle of the ring now just shooting her finger up to the sky and now she has the women's championship belt around her chest and she points to your direction to where you're going to come out as it's she's clearly saying there's no way in hell you'll get this belt off me and then she does like a double hand motion, like coming down and every one of the ends of the rings just erupts with a purple, purple flame. And then the lights go up for you, Figs. Okay. So what I'm going to do is come in with mirror image and fairy fire dancing around everywhere. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Give me a performance roll with advantage. 
There's a whole reason for this, guys. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that is a 25. Nice. Oh, my God. Hell's scream. Like, the people who were like... You see, here's the thing. People were just booing Hell. So even their booing and chanting against her, the screams come and the chanting and hurrahs compare nothing to what you just got. And that's when you see people have like signs that how the hell people people already have signs that say figs 316. They do. <laughs> that's like, beautiful. There's there's other signs that says kick her ass figs for the win. <laughs> FTW. I love it. Thank you. You got it. Exactly. <laughs> and Figs, then all the, and then you look out and you see one section of the crowd, all these like big old poster boards go up until they finally make your face in it. And then in unison, they all flip it around to say FTW, Figs to win. So there you go, Figs. And then this is when Heimdall, he's in the middle of the ring. He's wearing. His announcer, clo- prodigious suit. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this match is scheduled for pinfall. In your left, we have the the cursed one. She crawled from the underworld, from Bator to be here. Hell! People are just, fuck off, ba- fuck off, hell, boo, boo! And then, and then... The newest challenger to grace uh, grace us with her presence. The shining, the shining light from the loon from the moon herself. We have the lunar goddess. Everyone is just erupting, going lunar, 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 figs, figs, figs. Yeah. So and you just hear someone say, "I want to have your babies." No, thank you, random citizen. <laughs> so. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get ready to rumble! And just everything in the plane just starts to shake, responding to this, and Heimdall goes, Fight! Thanks for your amazingness. Oh, you go first, Eric. No, I was just going to say, it's a shame this isn't a cage match. Oh. (laughs) Because then it would be hell in a cell. I just didn't want to make it too on the nose. (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. So, Figs, for you blowing away the entrance, you get the initiative. You get the you get the flow, the momentum. Take it away. What do you do? She is going to immediately try to take hell to the ground. Give me an attack roll with advantage. It would just probably be as a straight fourteen. <laughs> That's not enough to take her to the ground, but you you wrap up and you get her on the rope, put holding her up against it, and she's just are you trying to are you trying to hold me? Are you trying to handle me? Who do you think you are? And she tries to push up against you, trying to gain momentum, and she spins around you, gripping your chest, holding your stomach, and she's gonna go for a go for a suple- German suplex on you, which she calls the hell slam, the hell stamp. Thanks, quick, give me an acrobatics roll. Okay. Oh my god. I just realized I'm a rogue monk in a wrestling competition. Uh, that's a 16. Okay. For a f- so, I want you to paint how just as your what is your back is about to hit and make contact with the ground, you're only going to take the you'll only take 5 damage from how she was gripping your chest. How do you get out of this and land on your feet? Uh, so she's trying to hold me in the suplex. I'm actually gonna like hook my legs on her shoulders to kind of like bounce away like all the momentum she was having. Ooh, I like that. So hook your legs like under her shoulders and kind of flip yourself up so you yeah. don't take as much damage. Yes. And potentially have her hit the hit the mat instead. So simply from <laughs> momentum. I want you to give me so now she's gonna take the full brunt of what would have been her real attack. Roll me so actually I'll do this for you. She takes 12 damage as her, bad. Own, as her own back of her head slams across the mat and just kind of a what really looked like a brutal fall. Her looking at the back of her feet touched the back of her head. 
and she's just barely scrambling her feet. Figs, you have time. Do something. You can still take it away because she's not even on her feet. She's her. She's gotten rocks pretty good. Oh, gotta go do the feast. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that clearly either. You're gonna do a what now? I the think she said the bomb. The Batista bomb. Oh shit. So this is what I want you to do. Roll me a D twenty. Look that up. It's it's oh it's a, it's an amazing pile driver. So you're not going to roll to attack. Do you have three D twenty available? Roll three D twenty. Oh, simple, but damn, right on the spine, Jesus. And that's a thirty seven. Okay, so she's well past the point of being bloodied. As cat, can you please paint it? As you do this, as you do the Batista. <laughs> she like first she just kinda I guess she left her coat off because I forgot to mention that. And mm-hmm. she's gonna like brush it off her shoulders, like roll her deck, and then just swing her up and bring her back down. <laughs> oh, like the power that exudes from this Batista bomb, it literally makes the ring shake as hell lands down on it. And she's just, so do you want to go for the pin, Figs? Okay, so this is how this works. This is where the fun begins. For the first attempt for her hell to try to get out, I roll a d20. Nope, she can't, she can't muster the strength to power it up. The second attempt is a d10. Nope. No, wow. The last attempt is a d4. No. No. One, two. Three. The uh, ends of the of the ring erupt in massive confetti, and it starts raining down on you as Heimdall lifts your hands up, your arm up, figs, and puts the women's belt around your waist, it, and he holds the mic in front of you. What do you want to say? Uh, she, she's just gonna be like, "I told you," <laughs> and but she is afterwards going to go help hell up. <laughs> hell. Happily, she happily takes your hand and she says, that was an amazing match. You have my respect. She's going to be truthful. Like, I think I, I just, I really needed this. You deserve this. Take it in. And she pats you on your shoulder to let you, f- and she pushes you towards the center of the ring so you can really feel. So this Coliseum holds trillions of people, Cat. And that's how many people are screaming for you, chanting your name, celebrating your victory. Uh, it, she is a little overwhelmed because, you know, she's not used to this. <laughs> Ed, I want you to think, except for the Astral Sea, this is being broadcasted to every other plane right now. So every other, every other universe, every other plane is see, just saw your fight. But yes, Figs, this is your moment. And you just... I like to think that... Like, as all the confetti is raining down on you, a single spotlight just beams down and you just look up and you just take this in because this is your moment and you hold your breath waiting for something to take it away, some kind of nonsense to happen. And no, this is your moment. How do you feel as you start to walk back to your in- to your, um, your side of the entrance? Like this storm in her heart has been lifted. Good. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I have no idea how how we could ever follow such an amazing opening match, but we will because we got the greatest Hell in the Cell tag team match coming up next. Stay tuned, fight fans. And Everin, it's finally your turn. This is when we see on the screen for the for the screen for the Megaplex for the Mega Screen, mm. and you're there backstage with Thor. Thor's just chugging down two massive cans at the same time. You know, I'm ready to really show everyone what I got. Can I get a hell yeah? And you just hear a collective, hell yeah. 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 And and that's when Heimdall holds the mic to you, Evern. Your moment. Take it away. Now I know I caused a bit of a stir at Miss Swift's concert last night, challenging the chairman, Vince McOdenson, for ownership of the Multiversal Wrestling Federation. But I have my reasons. I think they're good. And whatever he's going to put in my way, because he's scared, I'm going to put his back to the canvas in the ring. I'm going to overcome. Thor is going to bring the thunder. I'm going to strike like lightning. Oh, yes. 
just a just a big flashing crash boom goes across the screen and that's how it wipes and as we go to the to the ring it's been cleaned up after Figs's match a massive cage has lowered down it's weird though the top of the cage is very dark though we'll come back to that as it's time so on the on the plex in the music it would have been hell and Jormungandr's special entrance theme but now it's just Jormungandr's but he's walking with what looks like yeah that's definitely Loki's signature hood and cloak covering and it's about the right size of Loki and they're just walking down the aisle and compared to hell's entrance this is extremely underwhelming and to the trained eye Jormungandr doesn't have anywhere near to his normal pep because Jormungandr is my version of Booker T. All right. And he doesn't do his signature of fl- windmill or flare when he goes into the ring. He just does a weak hearted, like raising his fist and everyone cheers for Jormungandr. Even though he's a heel, p- the crowd love him. I can dig and, it. And granted, you hear people booing against Loki, like, how could you turn against your tag team partner? Thor loved you. Boo! He was like your brother. Exactly. So. Everin. Yes. How does your interest with Thor look in? Because Thor, he got a good feeling from your energy and he thought it would be a good idea to let you take away the choreography and the music and effects for this entrance. So take it away. Oh boy. Well, the music I chose is some 80s glam rock from one of my favorite films. Ooh. Oh, and no, that is. Doc- oh, no, no, no. Don't worry. He was just listening in. Right. His internet well, might have disconnected. I am nothing but a dork and a geek. And longtime listeners of Dungeons and Pop know this. Mm-hmm. I mean, I play the Red Ranger. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> but there is one franchise, even older than the Power Rangers, that will always be one of my go tos. And back in the 80s, it was one of the biggest, the best, and got its own theatrical release. Oh, Without further boy. gilding of the lily, I speak of the Transformers, and the you movie. Got the- that you got the touch? No. Oh. Nothing's gonna stand in our way. Oh, even better. And I think to match that energy. Yeah, definitely. So we're gonna start with the lights going off suddenly. Mm-hmm. You get that opening guitar riff of the song as coming down the the walkway, you get the little flares popping up and with a flash of lightning and a street and a roll of thunder <laughs> oh, the fortunate ones Boom. <laughs> the lights come up it's me and thor thor is wearing whatever he's wearing i'm wearing kind of a wrestling version of my original outfit not the golden armor that i wear as the solar king but i'm wearing brown wrestling boots blue tights a white top and kind of a red bolero jacket. I love it. Okay. And as the song goes, we're hyping up the crowd. I'm actually, you know, kind of bouncing up and down on my feet. Thor, I can imagine, is just, you know, making his way like the steamroller he is, waving his hands, calling up the crowd. I, being the smaller, skinnier dude, am showing more energy by, you know, kind of bouncing up on both of my feet, pumping my fist in the air, going, yeah, you know, singing along to the music. I'm also hyping up the crowd. And that's when your music all of a sudden stops. And it shows someone, there's like this little, what looks like this little creature and riding in a cloud that has like a fishing pole holding a camera. A Lakitu. And he's looking at the top of the cage and you see what looks like a, it's definitely Magni, but he's wearing this strange looking leather mask on his face as he's, oh. col- as he's holding what looks like a clearly beaten and bl- badly bloodied Loki. You thought, Dad, you could hold back God kind, but God kind was watching you. And I took out your partner, father. And now God kind and his brother. Maine will take out you! And that's when Modi, otherwise known as Godkind, locks in Loki in this horrifying 
Locke with his legs in between Loki's legs and holding his feet, posi- locking Loki's chin downward so his face is p- just facing Ooh. the ground. And he twists his legs and holding each one and then pressing down on them. He's going down like a rocket. That's when, that's why I rolled. I did these two rolls. The first roll was for Jormungandr as Modi, otherwise known as Maine. Now ripping off the Loki cloak, sporting, sporting what looks like a red mask mm-hmm. and just a red and red unitard with like a black belt across it and what looks like these black flames across him. He grabs Jormungandr, falls backwards and slams his feet as hard as he can into his back, sending him into the sky, squats down, puts himself like a spear and shoots himself in the air and they Squish Loki and Jormungandr between the two of them, and they each take 71 damage. Oh. As instantly Jormungandr and Loki are down. Oh, boy. And that's when the two of them, they put their backs together, locking their arms, crossing their arms, going, well, come on in and face your hell. I think everyone's going to look at him and go, oh, no, we've got you for three minutes. That's three minutes of playtime. Give me a performance roll with advantage. Ooh, with advantage. <laughs> yes. Eighteen's not bad. The crowd was at first going to, they were horribly saddened by what just happened to Jormungandr and the real Loki. But because of what you just said, they are chanting, ever in, ever in. So. You get the momentum. Take it away as you go on the stage. Main backflips out of the ring, go running towards running towards his dad, Thor. What do you do with God kind as he's looking at you? And you notice a sock on his left hand. Hmm. I think, yeah, I'm going to run down the rest of the way. I'm going to dive slide under the bottom rope mm-hmm. like, and, and skid across the mat right up next to him. And as I pop up, I'm going to grab him around the waist. I'm going to lift him up and I'm going to drop him. Now give me, give me that strength roll. I mean, just give me an attack roll. All right. Unarmed attack. Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Oh boy. 24. You beat his roll, dude. So really paint this for us as you do it, as you, for what kind of slam you're doing and how the ring responds. Okay. So, I mean... I'm going to keep it simple. It's an opening maneuver, right? So we're going to keep the dive under the rope. He's going to, you know, skid across the mat. He pops up. Mm-hmm. And as he wraps his arms around Godkind, everyone's going to hiss, Godkind ain't shit. Oh. him up. Show, I mean, and everyone's not the biggest, you know, he's a, he's a half elf. So he's kind of on the spindly side, but I mean, he lifts Godkind up a good like foot and a half off the mat and i and i think just for sake of ease he's gonna push himself not just fall forward in gravity he's gonna slam god kind into the mat just falling forward roll 3d20 for me and as you're doing that outside main had tried to grip his father but he couldn't as thor he starts punching him in the head and each time he hits him he goes and then you hear the crowd go "Ah, ah, 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 ah." And he does that a few times till finally he gets around his son jumping in the air and then he puts him around his back into what would clearly be the Kanikuman Buster. He goes, you've been thunderstruck and then yes. lands on the ground with it. And Maine takes 38 damage. Yeah, unfortunately, I only get 12. You do a good, yeah, you do a nice 12 damage against God kind. It's a good Main, start. Main falls to the ground. And let me see how. All right. Oh, shit. Okay. Thank God. All right. Godkind is distracted as Thor was diving into the ring and Godkind noticed him and he went to try to go to the ropes and stomp on him. But Thor was able to get past his son. Nice. You got the momentum, my man. Take it away. Oh, since I'm right there on Godkind, I'm going to put him in a figure four leg look. Here we go. Roll a d20. All right. Uh... Oh, ho, ho. roll a d10. Not bad. Ah, okay. 
It's barely he's able. He's pulling you as you have him in the figure four. You're just tightening. You can hear the bones creaking, rubbing against, cracking against each other as he goes to the rope, grabbing it, and you have to let him go. I let him go. You have no heel. You almost had him. We were almost to the D fours. It all it works just the same way as the pinfall rules. But it's a right. contest of roles for when you go for a submission. <sighs> oh, but it's using this momentum. Oh shit. Yep. Thor grabs his son, puts him on his shoulders. On his oh, shoulders no. as he looks at you, Everin. And he nods and points at one of the ring at one of the <laughs> ring ring ends. All right, one of the one of the corners. All yep. Right. He wants you to climb. He I climb. I climb. I get to the top rope and I spread my hands out. What were those what were those two that my my, my friend in high school The Dudleys? Met? No, no, no. Matt Jeff Hardy? Matt. Oh, the Hard the Hardy brothers. Jeff and yeah. Matt Hardy. Yeah. Oh. It's been a while since I've talked wrestling with him and watched clips and everything, but I think honestly, that's how Evren fights as one of the Hardy boys. I love it. So you're going to go for a moonsault? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, roll 4D20. I'd also like to put a little oomph and maybe a a somersault moonsault. Definitely roll the 4D20. All right, rolling 4D20. Oh, shit. Ladies and gentlemen, I rolled a 20, a 14, a 13, and a 10. This counts for immediate pinfall because you downed him over his health. Wow. So as you're as you're going to go, I want you to. So as you're going for the pinfall, Maine had gone into the ring, and that's when Thor, looking at his son, oh, oh, oh shit, kicks him in the stomach, turning around, grabbing his son by the chin over his shoulder. He goes, "All right, son, let me get a hell yeah! Time for the Thunder Stunner! Thunder! It's called the Thunder Stunner." Thunder Stunner. I like that. And this is for 60 damage. Damn! As a thunderous boom goes from Thor's ass, and you <laughs> both go for the double pin. Damn straight. One, two, three! The cage gets lifted up as immediate medical attendees go to Jormungandr and Loki. Mm-hmm. And Heimdall lift you and Thor's arms straight up to the sky. Everyone's just like, yeah. Bahumat is looking on and he just smiles and goes, good. You can see Everin, him. Everyone meets Bahamut's eyes and points right at him. He points back at you. <laughs> Everyone gives him a thumbs down. He just laughs and chuckles as he goes to leave. Roud is, a, is in eruption as it's finally come to the main event. Something's very off. As Suter is going out, he's holding his ear to the crowds as they're all doing it, as chanting Suter. His that song, his that trademark song comes in, and the crowd is going wild. But that's when the jumbo f- screen comes on, and Costas goes, "I'm sorry, Everin. I told you. If only you would have been here sooner." And you know what? I don't care if. Thruder, if Thruder's life is at cost for this. And you see what clearly is the championship belt, but it's been ripped apart. And there's the piece of the great cosmology wheel. Mm. Ars Dune promised me the elemental plane of fire would be safe as long as I ensure that Suter is broken here and now. This will be my plane as he swallows it. Ars Dune will use you up like a... Are you still? Sad fool. As from underneath the ring, a massive pillar of fire erupts. Vince McOden's son burning alive, being taken in the flame. And then just a, what is standing there now after the pillar dies down? It's just perfection. What would be the perfect form, physical form, just in of pure fire. But with still just like with a mixture, a crackling mixture of like a black flame. It feels so good. Figs, Everin, because you two did that, I'm awarding you something. You have the chance to act. What do you do the minute this all happens? Are you making your way back to the ring? Or what happens? Oh, uh, you gotta know I'm coming in with the chair. Oh my god, it's Figs with the <laughs> chair! Oh my god! Oh my god! 
So I'm going to award you very special for that one, Figs. Everin. Yes. You. What? Uh, how do you react after to what you just said? Well, I'm in the ring with Thor and Heimdall, right? Yep. And he's backstage somewhere with the... Um, oh, wait, um, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. This was after your match. It, things had okay, okay. gotten set up. You're backstage now. You had just seen all this happening on, this, on the live video. So... How are you reacting? Are you grabbing any, asking anybody else to come with you to the stage? Or are you just running by yourself? I, you have I, that time to do something. So give me a perception roll as well. All right. And you too, Figs. Okay. So what I would like to do. Ooh, 21 perception. So what I would like to do. Let's say 18. Okay. You both are going to meet this. So, oh. Nice. So as you're going, Everin, you're passing by what looks like this strange dirt mound and you see what looks like a black hat on this really clumsily made cross <laughs> you notice this strange looking creature is standing guard on it you have enough time to attack it one time same thing for you figs but for you you notice the strange creature is watching over this weird portal uh-huh. yeah i think i'm going to go for an attack roll with advantage. Figs, if you attack, it's the same thing. Okay. Now, the question is, what do I want to attack with? You have free reign to do any kind of attack. It's not unarmed. Whatever you wish to go with. So, Figs, if you want to use a spell, use a spell. Vicious Rapier it is. This is not kayfabe. Damn. Mm, I like it. Let's use the thing. <laughs> Wait a minute. Ooh. Okay, that's initiative rolls. Oh, and Figs, so- your Jasmine Dagger has actually become the chair. Nice. The Jasmine chair. Oh, then I gotta use the Jasmine chair. (laughs) I forgot uh, what the hit on that. Or two hit. I believe I told you that was a plus four. Plus four? Okay, that's a 19. Oh, it's gonna land. So it just like lights up the creature as it just bursts into a ray of light. And you continue your running to the stage. But as you're going away, you clearly hear from that portal... In. Oh, I know what's happening here. <laughs> and Everin, yes. as you impaled that thing, that creature with your rapier, yes, you literally feel the ground shake, but it's not benevolent. You keep running. Figs, you make it to the stage holding that glowing chair in hand. Everin, you make it to the stage. You're standing next to Suter. Didn't think I was going to let you do this alone, did you? Thank you, Everin. Hey. Uh. You know, I hate to say it, but I, I think your match against Vince is already over, and by default, you're the winner. Well, all that, all that's left is the paperwork, then. <laughs> we just gotta make it through this. Oh, God. Su- God. Suter pushes you out of the way. Oh, thank God. As Suter does a g- backflip, and he's only, going, he's only going to take half damage from this. That's not terrible. Okay, so I'm going to have to round it off. He's going to take 22 damage. Okay. As when Casas looked at you two, he just snapped his fingers, and then a pillar of flame just shot at you two. And th- thankfully, you're going to take nothing from Suter's actions. I think everyone will cry out, Suter! It's okay! Get up! Figs, you have time to act. So do you, Everin. Everin's going to rush in. Oh, go for an attack roll your choice. I'm rushing in, but I'm also gonna cast glare on him. Ooh! I'm gonna let you have that as a bonus action, Figs. And speaking of bonus action. Yes. Uh, let's see. What was it? Simple without a pri- I keep. Ah, steady aim. As a bonus action, you give yourself advantage on your next attack roll on the current turn. You can use this bonus action only if you haven't moved during this turn. And after you use the bonus action, your speed is zero until the end of the current turn. Well, maybe I can't then because I said I, I, I ran in, so I moved. No, 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 I'll let you have that. All right, so that's a 27 to hit with my vicious rapier. Uh, so he, ha- he also has to make a wisdom saving throw? Oh, he got, he, he made it. Oh, uh, what was the... He got a 20. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> But go ahead and give me a roll with the Jasmine. Or give me a roll if you're going to attack the Jasmine chair. Oh, and absolutely. <laughs> Everin. Yes. Give me a double damage. So roll your damage twice. Very well. That's a 23. Roll your damage twice, Cat. There's a reason for this. You're hitting him with the Jasmine chair. This causes double damage whenever it hits him. Nice. 
as he lets out a scream. I want both of you just to give me an acrobatics roll after Katz give me, gives me her a damage. That's fair. However, I would like to spend a key point. Yeah, let's go right ahead. Wait, no, that's a bonus action, which I already used to give myself advantage. Never mind. No, no, no. If it makes sense, I'll let you have it. Well, How would you key, like to do this? Well, key fueled attack. If I spend one key point or more as part of my action on my turn, I can make one attack with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon as a bonus action before the end of my turn. Go for the attack, because I'm going to give you just enough time before he... Because essentially what he's doing is building, sucking in the flames into himself to do a mini cell explosion. That's a 22 to hit without advantage. Go for it. And, you, and Kat? Yes, I also got a 24. Oh, uh, yeah. 20, 23, 23. All right. So roll your damage one more time, Eric. Okay. Okay. He's bloodied. He so is bleeding. 23 and, and 17 damage between yep. my between my attacks. Holy crap. As both of you, I want you now to give me that acrobatics roll. As you can feel what's coming, the danger coming as he's about to... As you know what's coming as soon as just get out of the way. That's a 17 on my end. Oh, okay. Hold on a real sec. One second, guy. And let me get my calculator real quick. Yes, players. And this, dear listeners, I have to do some math real quick. So, <laughs> so 70. You're only going to take 24 damage. Well, that. Quite strong. <laughs> I'm about half. My hit point maximum is 87. I'm down to 43. Uh, I went from 70 to 41 between the two fights. So what looks like a bloody trail of ma- what would be the equivalent of his blood, like just magma going down his eye, making him have to keep one eye shut. You're not going to stop me. Yes, this I am. Oh, God, this is beautiful. This is, oh, my God. I want everyone is going to go for an attack roll at the same time. Now, what is the what is the gift of the demigorgon give me again? Plus five, baby. Plus five. All right. So guess what? Everyone hit except uh, everyone hit except for Kossus. Oh, wow. So I'm going to ask all of you, how do you want to do this? Well, I'm definitely going to uppercut him with the chair since I crazy. <laughs> You're not going to need to do damage roll. I want just pure RP as you guys put an end to him. So you're literally uppercutting him with the chair. Yeah, I want him flying in the air for whatever these two are going to do. And that's when (laughs) Suter is doing all these incredible amount of backflips and handsprings as he runs for the top rope, grabbing it, and he sends himself pulling it, stretching it so far, ever in. Yes. This is when you just see he's in the air still. You have the chance to send him on the ground for preparing him for whatever Suter is going to do. All right. I'm going to jump up onto the top rope as well. Like Suter, I'm going to use it to slingshot, but I'm going to slingshot myself up to Kossif. Oh, as I do, yeah. I'm going to thrust my vicious rapier out and just skewer him like a kebab. Oh. And then I'm going to, you know, you know, Skewer him and then just push us down to the ground. And I'm going to call out, shoot her now. And as you do, you pull your rapier back flipping off of him. Kossith barely stands up as you hear Kossith. I'm sorry. You hear Suter scream out awesome as he nails Kossith in the back, grabbing his arms and they hit the other ropes on the other side. And just a perfect indent of all three ropes dig themselves into Kossith until finally the his body just goes limp. And the piece of the wheel just falls to the ground out of the ring. Now the rewards, you guys, for what you had did. That's when the body starts to go out of control because the piece of Thar's doing, he's failed. Oh, shit, Ron! But that's when all the dar- all the lights go off in the Coliseum. Uh-oh. And then the lights come back on and they're just a brilliant green. And then you see coming down the aisleway with just a big, round, black hat. It's the slowly Underdreamer. Walking. He's slowly walking as... Ooh, you thought I wouldn't get in on the fun? Ooh, 
Ah. As the massively mutating Kossuth gets wrapped around his back, you see a dragonborn with these rainbow tassels going off of his elbows launch himself. Oh no, it's not the Macho Man. man. <laughs> the ultimate warrior. Scar. It's literally like a tornado as you guys are barely holding on as they're spinning and they hit the ground as finally the Underdreamer gets to the ring. The lights come back on as he slowly took off his hat and his all, his four eyes are rolled back as he's looking around. Yes. As he was going in, or were we hearing chanties of a uh, Aya Aya? <laughs> yup, you know it! You <laughs> know it! Cthulhu. <laughs> and as he takes off his hat, he walks towards the mutating Kossith as Rothgar slowly bows down to bows down to the Under Dreamer. He grabs Kothith, spins him around, gripping him in his back with his legs pointing to the sky, launching himself, breaking the stratosphere. Oh, damn, as this they, is like a super tombstone. As he net comes back to the ground as you guys blink. Boom! Kothith just lands to the ground. Both of his mighty hands hits his chest. As you hear, one! Cthulhu rolls his eyes back. Two! His tongue comes out as he flicks it up and down. And Rothgar looks at you too and hands you both the piece of the reality wheel and goes, I believe this belongs to the two of you. Aaron just nods his head and thanks and takes the piece he's offered. And just with the hustle and bustle of everything that's gone on, that's when finally Cthulhu standing up, he looks at you. For helping free me and my protege. I can promise you it may not be the full might of the MVWF. But it, it will be guaranteed me and Rothgar will stand there at your side. I'll take all the help I can get. And Cthulhu holds out his hand. And as he traces his finger in a circle. Boom. He goes, this is your way home. Thank you. And I will let you both know now. You saved this universe. You are heroes. Thank you. Everyone bows again, turns to the crowd, puts his fists up. Thank you! Good night! I will see you again! They just erupt in massive cheer for you two as you go through the portal. And as you come back, boom! It's weird. Everyone, you recognize, oh no, you're on that high elf ship. Oh, goody. And then, as if on cue, Hundreds of spears surround you guys. And then you just hear a... Arrest them! Terrorists! And murders! For the attempt... Well, will that piece? <laughs> Everin, Everin will casually lean up against one of the guards that is pointing a spear at him and use the spearhead to clean under one of his nails. Goes, man, when you die at the palace, you really die at the palace. And this is the and as Fig swallows that piece, that's the cliffhanger we're going to leave off on, dear little. Oh, I bet you're excited because oh boy, Figs, that was actually makes you way closer to your end goal. So get ready, dear listeners, because this when we come back in the trial, the start, this is going to be crazy. So thank you, dear listeners, and goodbye.